السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس دس از ڈپارٹمنٹ آف انگلش گورنمنٹ پوسٹ گریجویٹ کالج اٹک آئی ایم ناصر علی شاہ اسٹوڈنٹس وی آر ریڈنگ دا ٹیکسٹ آف دا ناول دی اولڈ مین ان دا سی ان آور پریویس لیکچر وی ریڈ دیٹ آن دی ایٹی ففتھ ڈے سینتیاگو دی اولڈ مین گوز فار آؤٹ ان ٹو دا سی اینڈ وین دا برائٹنیس آف دا مارننگ اپیئرس ہی نوٹس از دیٹ he has come further than he had hoped to be at this hour. Then he makes uh, his preparations for catching the big fish. He takes out his sardines and baits which the boy had given him, arranges them with the hooks and then he those hooks tied tied with the lines he puts them down into the water of the sea he puts down four uh, different lines into the sea <coughs> first bait was down at 40 fathoms the second was at 75 fathoms and the third and fourth were down at 100 and 125 fathoms these were his different preparations and he put down different hooks along with the baits at the different uh, levels or the different depths uh, of the water so that if at any level of the water in the depth in the sea uh, the big fish would be swimming he could be able to catch it with that hook. He had also made a special arrangement in preparing his uh, hooks or lines. Uh, he had put uh, those baits or sardines in such a manner on the hooks that the no, par- no part of the hook was uh, visible or perceptible if any big fish came in there to eat them. This was his experience through which he knew that some big and uh, experienced fish uh, were very difficult to catch <clears throat> if they uh, feel that uh, the fish or the the bed which uh, they were going to eat behind those bats there is a big hook in which those fish can be caught so the those big fish might be intelligent and they might not be caught so uh, due to these reasons his preparations were very exact and precise today we are going to read the text from here the new paragraph the boy had given him two fresh small tunas or albacore which hung on the two deepest lines like plummets and on the others He had a big blue runner and a yellow jack that had been used before. The boy Melonin had given the old man two fresh small tunas or albacore. These are also the names of small fish which are generally used as a bait on the hooks to catch the big fish. Along with also uh, the other sardines and other baits, the boy also had given him small tunas and albacores. these are also small fish which hung on the two deepest lines like plummets and these were tied or hung with the two deepest lines uh, which the old man had put down into the sea at 100 fathom and a fourth one at the 100 uh, and 125 fathoms these were arranged with those hooks and they hung down in the deepest lines like plummets plummet is uh, a little weight that keeps the hooks down in the water so that they wouldn't be drifted away with the movement of the current of water and on the others he had a big blue runner and a yellow jack that had been used before uh, and uh, but they were in good condition still and had the excellent sardines to give them scent and attractiveness these are also his gadgets along with those hooks uh, blue runner and yellow jack and upon them the old man had also 
put some uh, fresh and excellent sardines to to give them scent scent mean uh, attractive smell and attractiveness so that the fish could be caught with the help of these hooks each line as thick around as a big pencil a big pencil as students you know that it is quite uh, thick in uh, in width uh, so each line which he had tied with the hook uh, was uh, thick just like a big pencil uh, from it it is really, uh, this it is very easy for us to understand that if the line is so uh, thick just like a pencil then then it must be uh, the hook with which the line is tied the hook must uh, also be very big and through this big hook and the strong and uh, uh, strong and this just this type of uh, strong line the old man can be able to catch the big fish it was looped into the great uh, green shaped stick so that any pull or touch on the bat would make the stick dip the old man had tied also a green shaped stick stick of or the small branch of a tree or a plant on the upper surface of the water it was tied with the uh, uh, with a line so that any pull or touch on the bat would make the stick dip it was just uh, to notice that if in the depth of the water if a big fish comes there to eat the sardines or those bats which are on the hooks and if there is a little pull or touch on the bat which is deep down in the water from above the surface of the water the old man could uh, notice this movement uh, with the help of the sticks that would be uh, that would dip in the water and each line had two 40 fathom coils uh, with each line there was two extra 40 fathom coils of length uh, which could be made fast to the other spare coils it was that, uh, that if it were necessary a fish could take out over 300 fathoms of line it means that the old man had not just only uh, that line which was tied with the hooks he had also some reserve reserved coil of lines so that if any fish fish if it is so big and uh, if it is caught in the hook and uh, moves away while pulling the hook the old man could tie the that uh, line with the extra reserved coil of lines and uh, so that the fish could take over out uh, out over 300 fathoms of line now the man watched the dip of the three sticks over the side of the skiff and rode gently to keep the lines straight up and down and at their proper depths now the old man was rowing his skiff very steadily and slowly he was also watching his uh, lines on which uh, on the upper surface of uh, the water where there were some sticks tied to them and he rowed gently Uh, and peacefully to keep the line straight up and down and at the proper depth it was quite light and any moment now the sun would rise now the morning was uh, uh, almost uh, close quite light and the sun was just about to rise from the east the sun rose thinly from <clears throat> the sea then mean very early in the morning from very far distance the sun was looking very thin or it was not just it had not just appeared in its uh, full form and the old man could see the other boards now when the sun rose the old man was able to see some other boards as well low on the water and well in toward the shore that were uh, very far from the old man that is why they were looking low in the water and very inward to toward the shore means they were very far behind near the shore while the old man was in the open sea very far from the shore spread out across the current those boats were also spread out, spread out means they were 
at a very long distance from each other. Then the sun was brighter and the glare came on the water. Sun was brighter mean when the sun rose in its full form from uh, the east. It became more brighter and the glare came. Glare mean reflection of the sunlight from the water. Came on the water and then as it rose clearer, the flat sea sent it back at his eyes. When the sun rose clearer or it uh, rose at a much height, the its reflection on the flat surface of the sea came glaring into the old man's eyes and it hurt sharply. Due to that sharp or bright uh, brightness of the sunlight, it hurt the old man's eyes and he roared without looking into it. That is why he tried to row his boat without looking into the sea. Oh, sorry, without looking into the uh, sun. He looked down into the water and watched the lines. Instead of looking toward the sun, he looked down into the water of the sea and watched the lines that went straight down into the dark of the water. He kept them straighter than any one did. It also shows the old man's uh, experience. Being an experienced fisherman, he was able to keep his lines straight up and down instead of drifting them at a lesser height or uh, sorry at a lesser depth into the water with the current or flow of the water so that each at each level in the darkness of the stream there would be a wet <coughs> bed wetting exactly where he wished it to be <coughs> for any fish that swam there he kept his lines straighter than anyone else as we have just read in the previous paragraph that he uh, kept those lines at different depths in the water so that at each level in the darkness of the water there would be a bat waiting exactly where he wished or where he wanted for any fish that swam there. Others let them drift. Others mean other fishermen. Let their lines drift away with the current of or with the flow of the water. And sometimes they were at 60 fathoms when the fishermen thought they were at 100. It means that the other fishermen, being inexperienced, they thought that their baits or their hooks were at 100 fathoms. But instead of that, uh, actually their uh, baits were at a 60 fathoms. Whereas the old man thinks that he keeps his uh, baits exactly with precision at the same depth where he wished to be. <clears throat> but he thought, I keep them with precision. Precision means exactness. He thinks that he keeps his lines or his hooks in exact position in the depth of water. Only I have no luck anymore. But he thinks about his luck. He says that he has fulfilled each and every criterion of catching a big fish. He has struggled and worked very hard. There, were, there was no uh, deficiency on his part, but he thinks that why he has been unable to catch a uh, big fish for so long, actually for 84 days, uh, and he thinks that only I have no luck anymore. He thinks that he is not lucky anymore. But who knows? But he doesn't lose heart. He thinks again, who knows? I mean, nobody knows when luck comes to you when you become lucky. Maybe today. Every day is a new day. Students, this is another very important sentence of the old man which shows his willpower, his strong resolution and his optimism or hopefulness. Um, he says, every day is a new day. This is an interesting and very important sentence. <clears throat> you should underline this sentence in your textbooks. It is better to be lucky. No doubt, to be lucky it also is also very good or very uh, beneficial for a person but i would rather be exact but he says that i am uh, i i don't want to depend on the luck or wait for the good luck rather i want to be exact I mean i have to do uh, my work with uh, exactness and precision instead of waiting for good luck then when luck comes you are ready it it is also a very good moral lesson for us uh, those uh, people in a, in life uh, who 
keep on waiting for success in their lives waiting for uh, good luck or a chance or opportunity the old man thinks or gives them a practical lesson a practical message that you should be exact mean you should do you you should do your hard work with exactness and precision so that when luck comes you are ready for it this is uh, in fact a moral lesson for us Uh, so these are some philosophical thoughts of the old man which are very important uh, to ponder over for us students this is enough for today's lecture we shall continue reading the text in our next lecture